the PTL. Here goes nothing. Coming up on Primetime League, we break down the LCS playoff push. Vitality's Kasing takes on the 1v1 challenge, and I get freaky on the street. Make a wish and blow out the candles. Boom! Happy oh, birthday, he freak! <laughs> Primetime League starts right now! <laughs> Can Uzi get a penta on Vayne's shoe? He's been locked up, it will be! Uzi gets himself a penta kill! There goes the Nexus turret, and that is it. The Rocks Tigers will be defeated. Samsung wins it. Echo Fox, somehow they won the game. I cannot believe that. Hello and welcome to Primetime League, the unofficial LOL Esports party headquarters. I'm Riving the Business Third. That's the birthday boy, David Freak Turley. I'm 29 years young, Riv. Woo! Done? Yeah, got it. As an early birthday present <laughs> on Saturday, Echo Fox and Dignitas gave us all an incredible gift in the form of an epic 67 minute match that ended with Big and Hard coming in the back door to shatter the Nexus. Well, Froggen and Keith donned their overalls and farmed their way to all time CS records. Froggen's 764 CS and Keith's 738 now rank first and second in total creeps killed during a single game across the Premier Regions. Guys, let's all have a moment of silence for those poor and brave Void Spawns that gave their lives to make this all possible. Well, frog and farming like it's the Fertile Crescent is nothing new. Mid lane Nautilus is for most of the world. And when I say most of the world, I mean everyone except Chao Gu's Doinbi, who played it three times last year. But that was the exception. And right now, mid lane Nautilus might just become the rule. So far in 2016, mid lane Nautilus has been played 13 times across the LCK, LPL, LMS, North American, and European Challenger Series. He's been on the winning side in 69% of those matches. In fact, Nautilus has had more success in mid than his 54% win rate in the top lane and 47% win rate in support. So, I have to ask you, what yeah. is making Nautilus, the biggest guy in armor, the most flexible dude? Uh, I like that, it's a good line. Uh, <laughs> the fact that he's just kind of overpowered right now, honestly, he is, uh, as far as 6.4 is concerned, pretty insane. 6.5 has some nerfs to the damage on his Riptide. Mm. But the thing is, Nautilus is a tank that scales very heavily off of gold. He doesn't get any innate resistances, but his shield scales off percent max health, so all the things that you can buy make that very effective. Also, when he's up against mages very frequently, it turns out Banner Band's actually insane, <laughs> which works really well there as well. In fact, most of the mid lane Nautilus builds we saw were counterpicks to mages, and then the goal there was get Banner like first item, get his Rot Portal afterwards. And, mm -hmm. and now that also to, to sort of add more complexity to why this is working in the mid lane especially, is normally mid lane has been a carry role. But now that we're seeing like Kindred and Graves and more carry junglers come out sure. of the jungle specifically, you can now give up damage in the mid lane and rely on your jungler for that. And so the landscape of what champions are good has made Nautilus work in the mid lane. And just in general, he's just so good that you pick him all the time anyway. Well, I can't wait to see it. And while we've seen not of the Titan in the de of the depths in the LCS mid lane so far this split, we can at least listen in on pros in the newest edition of Mic Check. Facing my old team, man. It's my old team yeah. as well. I mean, you've been in every team in LCS, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true. Mic Check, please. Are we playing with jackets off or on? Off. Everyone stand up at the same time and put your jacket off. Okay. I will start, okay? And then you can follow. Wait, why do you take off your earphones? <laughs> you don't need to take your earphones, you know? I can't hear you. You don't need to stand up either, actually. <laughs> really nice synergy, guys. Relax. Focus on your breathing, alright? I want you guys to show the world what you guys are capable of. Because when I believe in you, then you have to believe in yourself. And that is the only thing that matters in the end. We can turn, we can turn. Nice. Kogi, 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 Kogi. He's dead. Kogi, 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 Kogi. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, we can keep going. Lucian, Lucian, Lucian. Keep going. Keep going. Lucian, Lucian, Lucian. Nice. Go ban, go ban. Go ban, go fight, go fight. If I win this game, can I get a cat? No. Okay. If I win this game, can I pet your cat, Eugene? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just backing up. Yeah, just defend. Let's try and hold our base. Actually, they're going to go ban. Nice. nice. Running. They're chunked. They're chunked. Nice. I got him. I got him. Nice, nice. We're good. We're good. I'm on the way. We're running over. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, we got one. We got one. 
I'm saving you, Jensen. Careful. Nice. nice. Going. We can do it. We can do it. Yeah. 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 Let's go. What's the most important thing about today? Um, object. Yeah. Don't, don't look at the gear. Oh, he's and here. No greed. No greed. Nice, okay. nice, nice. Forky flash. Dope, 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 dope. Oh, nice. nice. Good job. Q. Ah, okay. Q. 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 Q.
Elements, I think, will take number seven because, again, it's a bit like H2K G2, just almost the opposite in the sense of, like, that's two really good teams fighting for first, and then we have Splice and Elements who's been struggling fighting for number seven. I think Elements, honestly, it looks slightly better, slightly more consistent, yeah. and that's why, if it is a tiebreaker, I give it to them. Well, the head-to-head -head is one-to-one -one between Elements yeah. and uh, Splice and Red, and if we look at their matches, Elements is playing Fnatic and H2K, and Splice is playing G2 and Vitality, so honestly, I don't see them walking away with a win. Either way, I'm gonna say Yamato Screw can take the tiebreaker for seventh. I mean, you gotta make some bets. I mean, you gotta make yeah, some no, no, guesses no. here. I mean, it's, good, it's good we have some different things, yeah. because Elements and Splice, Again, I think it's the same as the 50-50, right? Yeah. No one can really predict 100% who's going to win. Same with the first one. The fourth one, however, I feel like is, is the one where Fnatic has looked like the clear-cut fourth best team in Europe right now, and Origin are still looking pretty bad, honestly, in the I way agree. they're playing. So when they play each other this week, I think Fnatic is going to win that game, and I think they're going to win it fairly easily. Yeah, to set the tone for that, so Fnatic now owns the head-to-head -head and is playing Elements on day one. We assume they're going to win. OG is playing Giants day one. We assume they're going to win, so that matchup will decide right. it. And I think that OG can push it to a tiebreaker. More because I knew that you were going to pick Fnatic and I wanted okay. a chance to win this bet. However, I feel like if they make use of the strengths they have, which they have as the Name only one. team, that they can change in their mid laner. They could, if they wanted but to. They but they put in a mid laner who's either not practiced and not really ready in Xpeka, yeah. or they keep playing Power of Evil, who clearly right now doesn't fit with the team and just been sick for a full week. It's almost a weakness. Like, no matter who they pick, it's it's a liability in a sense. But I guess people are arguing that Pekka provides leadership, you know, he changes the mentality of the team and they're... I mean, the game was just a clown fiesta of them last week as it was before. However, they managed to win or something sure. must be there. However, um, Power will be playing as far as we know, so... I'm still gonna go. You gotta take that's some chances fine. if you want to win the bet. First place team we agree on, and I think that's kind of odd actually, because yeah. G2 in my mind is a bit stronger. Yet I'm going for <sighs> H2K as number one. I feel like it's because we're boring, you know. We G are. G2 is like you the are. Well, fine, I am, but you are apparently the same because you put put, yeah. put H2K first. Like G2 is like the party animal. <laughs> H2K is the guy that's sitting at home reading books and so on. And if they had to go... I'm G2. In, well, yeah, sure, you can be G2 in this. <laughs> but, like, if they had to go into a competition for whatever, I think the safe bet is just, like, give it to H2K. Yeah. But I honestly almost feel like G2 is just as likely to win that match. Well, their head-to-head -head is also one and one and they have... G2 has Splice and UOL, and H2K has UOL and Elements. So if it goes to tiebreaker, we called it for H2K, apparently. So... 50-50. You know, G2 fans don't hate us. No, they're great. It could just as likely be also, G2 taking that one. I know you're one. wrestling. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens, and you guys will see as well. So uh, we'll see you in the LCS. Well, Shocks and Deficio seal their bet in a legally binding contract. It's time to see how well you know the pro. Back on Tuesday, LOL Esports tweeted out a close-up of these sound detectors, and if you guess they belong to the unicorn of love's mid laner, Fox, you were wrong. These auditory cones actually belong to UOL's 80 carry steel back. It has been a tale of redemption for the unicorn's marksman, as his return to the European LCS after being benched by Fnatic last spring has been nothing short of fantastical. Steelback is currently tied for tied with Emperor for the most kills in the European LCS and is second to Forgiven in KDA for 80 carries. Not too bad. You can watch Steelback and his mystical mounts try and work their magic when they take on H2K in the European LCS match of the week this Thursday. Well, now it's time to let your fingers do the talking with the Primetime League Twitter question of the week. Last week, we asked your fingers which LCS team will have the biggest Baron power play, and for a chance, the Hall of Fame tell us how much gold they would earn within 100. Well, the answer was Energy Esports with the Baron power play of 6,549 gold. And after a two-week dry spell of no correct answers, we finally have a winner, so congratulations to Rawr Princess for correctly guessing Energy. Unfortunately, your gold was off, but even though I almost want to put you in the Hall of Fame anyway, I won't because that would be cheating and we are rules followers here at PTL. Either way though, everyone else, we've got a new question for you for this week so we can get this one. In honor of Wild Turtle's chance to dethrone Bjergsen in the kills per minute record this weekend, we want to know which LCS player will have the most kills per minute this weekend. For a chance at Hall of Fame, give us their total kills for the week. I'm going to say Wild Turtle himself at 13 kills. Hopefully, hopefully I am right. 
If you want to play along, be sure to hit us up at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag PTL. Get your guess in before day, sorry, game one of the European LCS. And now for a totally different game, let's head back over to Berlin for Kassing's 1v1 Showdown. It is time for another 1v1 Me Bro Challenge, and today we are joined by Vitality Support Kasing. I'm going to take a look at the effect that he brings to PTL. Uh, thanks for joining me. Are you excited about this segment? Yeah, very excited. All right, did you watch the one with perks? Do you, do you know how this works? Yeah, kind of. All right, well, I'm, I'll walk you through it, okay? It's pretty simple. It's 1v1, right? You and me. You have 90 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. I have quite a few of them, all right? You're going to get one point for every correct answer that you get right. And if you don't know because you're just not smart enough, you can say pass, and then I'll move on to the next question. But you keeping up with me? Yep. All right, cool. Now, Perks, when he did it from G2, he got 11 correct answers in 90 seconds. I'm gonna see if you can knock him off of the PTL leaderboard before you try and knock him off of the LCS leaderboard. And I can see some nerves in here. I can see some nerves. Right, let's just get straight to it, all right? 1v1 starts in five. Four, three, two, now. What is Thresh's passive called? Damnation. Ooh, good start. How many hard pillows and how many soft pillows do you sit on in the LCS? One hard, one soft. Well, I guess you would know that one. Right, which of these is not a type of pillow? The Daikimakura, Kashari, a Brazador, or husband? Kashari. And what is it, do you know? Egyptian. Oh, it is Egyptian <laughs> food. I like this, I like this. Okay, uh, what is your favorite pizza topping? Salami. Salami, good. Uh, not really my thing, though. Uh, what is the best Thresh skin? Uh, Blood Moon Fresh. Ooh, good answer. Okay, we're up to five. How much health does the Relic Shield give? 75. Correct answer. You are going to kick Perks' butt. Who is the only team besides Fnatic to win a European LCS Championship? Alliance. Ooh, okay, good one. Uh, trick question. What is Big Ben? A tower. No, incorrect. He's actually a bell or quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I'll give you the correct <laughs> answer anyway because you're both right. How much of the Earth's 36.8 billion acres of inhabitable land does the Queen of England own? 6.6 .6 billion. I'd love to know how you know that answer. Um, do you ask for permission uh, or ask for forgiven gree? Forgiven gree. Okay, you're sticking with the League of Legends. What's your best pickup line? I love you. Oh, I'd get a new one if I were you. Um, <laughs> NA or EU? EU, of course. No, wrong answer. The correct answer is LCK. Oh. Um, who is your favorite EU LCS pro to beat? Perks. Perks? I think you may have done it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. How much mana does Thresh's box cost? 150. Oh, it is 100. You end on oh. such a sour note. Oh my god, it's 100? It is 100. Oh, sorry. I, Dude, I, I, how could you not know this? <laughs> right, we're going to tally up the questions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12! Oh, thank you. Can someone God. verify with me if that was 12? <laughs> Confirmed 12! Oh. So you beat Perks in PTL. Yeah, it's pretty easy. All right, first one for that one. Perks, dude, uh, that's it. So that about does it here. And uh, with 12 points, Kasing has won the 1v1 me bro for PTL Europe. You can watch Kasing try take on the rest of the top of the table LCS teams this Thursday and Friday. He will be taking on Rocket and Splice for a chance to knock G2 off of that top spot. We'll see you then. CLG or C9? Who cares? H2K, G2 or Vitality? Yeah, whatever. What really matters heading into the last week of the LCS Spring Split is fantasy. Now, if you're like me and you're already crushing all of your leagues or at least one of the 10 that you're in, then the next two minutes maybe don't mean so much for you. But if you're still in that really tight fight for like first or second place, maybe the info right here is what makes the difference between you being a championship winner and a loser with a second place ribbon. So let's talk about players that are gonna be awesome in fantasy in week nine. Hybrid, G2 support. Now, I've had him in my lineup for like seven weeks at this point, but legit, he is the number three support in all of fantasy. He's against Unicorns of Love and Splice. Unicorns are pretty solid team. Splice, not so great. Honestly, though, G2 gets kills. He gets assists. Great player. Next up, CLG mid laner Huhi. Oh, yes. This guy is actually doing pretty solid. Overall, CLG's... Uh, opponents are going to be pretty beatable. Energy and Team Dignitas are going to be pretty solid. Long games expected as well. Honestly, he's just done pretty well overall as a fantasy mid laner. It's worth putting up in most lineups. And then finally, someone to put on here, the jungler of Vitality, Shook. I know we've given some smack talk to Vitality playing low kill games, but that's gone up in recent history. Up against Splice and Rocket, these are also some fairly easy teams to beat. Vitality should go 2-0. Players on that roster should get some decent points, and Shook, I think, is a cornerstone here. He's just in a lot of these kills. So those are some of the good players. Let's talk about some of the bad. Let's go to the sour. 
hate to say it, but Yellow Star on TSM has not been good in fantasy. He hasn't been doing great in the league overall. It's unfortunate, but this has just not been a point of strength here for TSM. Also, Immortals and Energy are good. It's, it's just an incredibly hard schedule for TSM. It's going to make things really difficult for Yellowstar over here. Also, his teammate Svenskeren, unsurprisingly, he's not been great on TSM either. And, of course, this schedule is very difficult. I think if you have, like, Bjergsen and Doublelift, you can maybe keep them, but these guys, I think, definitely drop off. Hanser maybe as well. And then, finally, the last person to talk about dropping off, light it up here, Power of Evil from Origin. Look, he's a good player, and Origin were a really good team, but look, I actually picked him, I think, first round at the beginning of Fantasy, and then I dropped him for perks, because realistically, it's just not going very well right now for Origin. Giants are a beatable team, Fnatic a bit harder, and there's just better supports out there to pick up, like who we talked about earlier. That's what I would suggest for your lineup choices. Hopefully you guys win, good luck, have fun, and hopefully the kind of fun that Reckless has on Jin. Right now, we're gonna head over to Jat for a deadly flourish of knowledge, and a League of, Learning, League of Learning curtain call. Hey everybody, Jat here to bring you another League of Learning. And this week we're going to be talking about Jin again. When Jin first reached the LCS, we did kind of a overview of some of his kit, but we didn't get to go in depth on some of the things. So this week I wanted to talk specifically about his passive and how that interacts with his item build. So quick overview of the passive itself. Depending on your level, you gain 2 to 40% bonus attack damage. Every 10% crit chance you get increases your attack damage by another 4%. Every 10% attack speed increases your attack damage as well by another 2.5%. So everything pretty much increases attack damage. And also, he gets 4% more movement speed on crit per 10% bonus attack speed he builds. So that's pretty complicated. What does it mean? It means buying attack damage is the best way of increasing Jin's damage, and it also means that buying attack speed and crit, while they do help your damage, they contribute greatly to your mobility on Jin. So to talk about some of the math we're going to be doing in this segment, uh, these are our values for what we're going to be calculating. 1% attack speed, 25 gold, attack damage is 35 gold, and crit is 40 gold. We also have values for movement speed and lifesteal because that's going to be in some of the item builds. An example of just Stack conversion would be a static shiv. If you're not Jin, that item gives you exactly what it says in the shop. 35% attack speed and 30% crit chance. But for Jin, it converts to 20.75% bonus attack damage. 11.25% of this thing I'm coining as crit value here. Uh, basically, Jin only rolls for crit on three out of every four attacks. And when he does crit, it's for a diminished amount of damage. So this is kind of the value I have on 30% crit chance when converted to 11.25%. And also, because of the attack speed and crit chance on Static Shiv, he will be gaining 14% move speed on crit on top of the 10% he'd be getting from every passive. So he's going to be going about 24% faster every time he crits. So, now that we have that under our belt, let's look at a full-ish Jin build. Infinity Edge, Static Shiv, Essence Reaver, and Phantom Dancer. What those say they give you is 130 attack damage, 80% attack speed, 100% crit, for a converted gold value of 10,550. Then we look at Jin. He gets 328 bonus attack damage out of that, a 37.5% crit value from the conversion, but he also gets a bonus 32% movement speed on attack, since he does have 100% crit and will be critting on every single shot for a much higher gold value, 14,240. But that's not really the build that you should be going for if you're just looking for damage. Switch out the Phantom Dancer for a Bloodthirster. Now you're looking, and Jin can gain 404 bonus attack damage, 26.25% crit value, only 14% bonus movement speed on crit, which won't be on every single attack. And that converts to a much larger gold value of 16,365. So this is just kind of a math example of what we outlined earlier, where Jin can get a lot of mobility from building the zeal items like Shiv and Phantom Dancer. But if you're really just looking for damage, you should be focusing on the BF Sword items and the high AD ticket items. It's another big reason that Deathfire Touch is insane on Jin, because a build like this gives him 404 bonus attack damage, which applies the ratio on the Deathfire Touch Mastery. So this was just the passive of Jin and some of the complicated item conversions, but I enjoyed talking about it. I hope you did too. I hope you learned something, and that'll do it.
While the Virtuoso gets set for another week of killer performances, let's head around the world of LOL Esports for a look at the BFingest matches of the week. And there's no better place to start than the most badass league on earth, the, N the LCK. <laughs> Last week, the Rocks Tigers lost their first match since they came up short versus SKT in the World Championship. Interestingly enough, they lost to the 2014, really, but not really, world champions, Samsung. I know, it's not really, but we're trying to make it work. No, 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 it's fine. The connection is there, Riv. I'm proud of you. It's a really good one. Of course, on a related note, last week, the defending world champions and IEM champions as well dropped a game to the Africa Freak before they did mm -hmm. finally win that match. But that's not the funny part. The funny part is, is that that single game win by the eighth place Freaks actually means that they've now beaten SKT three times this spring in, in total games. And that's more than... Any team outside of Korea not named Edward Gaming had done all year. So, pretty solid stuff. I hear SKT yeah. was real good in 2015. And even in this year so far as well, 7 0 IEM, obviously a pretty top caliber squad. It's a little bit sandbagging. Bit. Yeah. So, this morning, SKT continued their winning ways by destroying the LCK's second place team, Jin Air. SKT dominated both games, ending each in just under 31 minutes and only falling behind 1,700 gold momentarily in game two. That pretty much means the pocket change to them. Yeah. That means heading into week 10 of the LCK Spring Split, the standings shake out just like this. Even with the Tigers giving up their first loss, they sit comfortably in their number one spot with Jin Air's loss to SKT last night. With three weeks left in the regular season, CJ Antis and Samsung Galaxy battle it out for a fifth place spot while Longzhu and the rest of the teams have their work cut out for them. It's gonna be a tough road ahead for a lot of these LCK teams to try to get themselves into the standings, but with rocks tumbling for a little bit for the first time and SKT finally climbing the standings, this sets the match, the stage, I should say, for our BF match of the week, and right. this one is going to be huge. So last time these teams did face off, rocks Tigers kind of crushed them. They got revenge for the World Championship Finals over there against SKT, and now SKT's turn to come in as the underdogs and try to upset Rocks Tigers. Of course, not a familiar position for these guys. That sounds kind of weird. <laughs> I know, being on the outside looking in here, but SKT honestly are looking pretty hot. Once they came back from IEM, they've won two matches in a row. Not only did, not only did they beat Africa Freaks, but they also crushed Jin Air, who are the number two team. So hey, if you can crush the number two team, then you battle number one, like maybe they finally play up to that level. We'll have to see. It's coming up soon. You can check out the LCK BF match of the week on Friday, March 18th at 1 a.m. Pacific and 9 a.m. Central European time. So while the LCK heads into week 10 and the LCS to week 9, the LPL is getting set to kick off week 7. And with four weeks of matches left to go, the LPL standings, they look like this. Uzi and the Chaogu Reapers bounce back from a rough IEM to win both of their matches last week, thanks in part to Uzi's pentakill on Vayne and holding on to the lead of Group A. Meanwhile, over in Group B, Nane finally got in a game for Royal Never, for Royal Never Give Up, uh, also including a match where Insect went Master Yi in the jungle, which was, they came back from like 16K down, by the way, the game was actually insane overall, <laughs> but Royal Never Give Up does stay on top of Group B because of this. Uh, also, LGD is no longer the worst team in China, so, I mean, finally, LGD has stopped sandbagging. Maybe they're just gonna win Worlds now. And, one other note out of the LPL is that former Samsung Blue Star Dade and Chaogu have parted ways. It won't have a big impact on the team or the league as he never really got in a game for the first place squad. Now let's cross the Taiwan Strait and check in on the LMS as they head into their second to last week of matches. And surprise, but not really, AHQ is still in first place with zero match losses and one tie. They've lost a single game right. in roughly 20. It's a pretty good <laughs> record. It's actually better than Immortals are doing. Hoping to do that as far as place. game score. Yeah, exactly. That'd be great. Nine and one, that'd be nice. Uh, the Flash Wolves are comfortably in second. TPA is in control of third. Uh, Machi and Hong Kong Esports are fighting for the final playoff spot, which would be fourth place here. That's right. And now it is time for, what are you yeah. doing? Uh, well, you see, Riv, I need to talk to some Esports fans about what they know about the North American European LCS. All right, look, I'll see you later, but it's time for Freak on the Street. True or false? I'm gonna ask these folks behind me some questions about the LCS. Of course, that's true. Let's check it out. Huni made top four at Worlds on Origin last year. False. Huni's really good at making grilled cheese sandwiches. True? Yeah, that is true. Solid stuff. <laughs> Aframu won a hot dog eating contest in 11th grade. True. <laughs> Actually, false. We made that one up. Yeah. Darshan can sing really well. False. Darshan is a great singer. False. Actually true, he's a great really? singer. Yeah. There are two X's in Stick Say, true or false? 
True. Good. There are two Z's in perks. True or false? False. There are two Z's in tabs. False. Oh. Are you ready to play some true or false? Same. Kobe's real first name is actually Kobe. True. No, what? <laughs> Kobe picked a screen name for his love of Kobe beef. True. Also false. <laughs> now I understand why you're a Renegades fan. You're getting a lot wrong. <laughs> After my great set of questions with you, you are now my biggest fan. True. Really? I'm actually surprised because I feel like I'm doing terribly right now. You are, but I'm still your biggest fan. <laughs> See, that, that's, that's the mark of true fandom, by the way. I'm not the best, and you still care. Just like with TSM, man. I'm proud of you. <laughs> that was a sick burn, true or false? True. <laughs> Yellow Star has been to every League of Legends World Championship. True. Yellow Star has been to three semifinals of the World Championship. True. Yellow Star won the Season 1 World Championship with Fnatic. False. Do you know what position he played in the Season 1 World Championship? 80k. Nice. Good job. All right. See, I'm proud of you for that one. That wasn't true or false. You, that's not allowed. <laughs> All right, Freak, my turn. True or false, it's time for the biggest plays from around the world of LOL Esports. True. True or false, Uzi can now call it to Penta. Also true. Same. Dropping into number five, it was Energy's Moon with the Baron Steel. Energy's already taken plenty of steals this season. Elise oh, has smite, and Moon is a superhero. It's down to a thousand health. Dardock was knocked up by the Baron, so he's unable to chain his Q with his Smite. So Moon just executes it from a thousand. Charging into number four, Chao Gu's V was a hero as he sent all four of his enemies back home. There's the death mark, Mako once again. He's gonna have to, yeah, just can't. The Mikhail's just not gonna quite do it as Deft. Now trying to auto-attack. Look at this ridiculous oh, wow. uh, full team ultimate out of V. That'll disengage it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> see you later, team fight. And uh, <laughs> see you later, inhibitor. At number three, Faker conquered the battlefield with his Sharima Shuffle. And now SK Telecom chasing Faker already with the Disc of the Sun, where the turret used to be. Nice Emperor's Divide, gets Kuzan and Pilot. Now it's the knockup, so Faker gets very low, but SKT all over this team fight. Trace, the last one standing, that's a double kill for Faker. What a play on that Azir. This play onto the backline, remember, two of these range carries completely ruined by the Flash Emperor's Divide. Man, Faker just turns that Emperor's Divide into a double insect kick and puts both carries right in the middle of his team. Chaogu Swift tossed Death's Kog'Maw back into the void with a perfect explosive cast in our number two play of the week. Mako's just doing his very best. Oh, oh my god, are you kidding? Again from Swift. Incredible explosive cask. Just like revel in this. Straight in the face, gives him the trophy. Stella. And tumbling into number one, it was Uzi with the pentakill. Here comes S17, gonna sit right on top of it. Zone is there, that's QG. I'm gonna try and re-engage the fight. Swift, he's gonna move in. As now S17's gonna lock down Uzi, who's trying to fire away, but a massive brawl multi is gonna combo in with the help of Gragas and Uzi. They've already taken out Gosu again. S17 should melt here on the front lines as the damage is just far too much. Uzi gonna get himself a triple. Chimin gonna be the next target. That's gonna be the Quadra. Can Uzi get a Penta on Vayne Shu? He's been locked up, it will be. Uzi gets himself a Penta kill. Well, you know, if I had one wish for my birthday, it wouldn't be for a pentakill. It'd be for a million more wishes. Who wouldn't? But then I'd use one of those wishes to remind you to send in the biggest plays from the week to us. Tweet your nominees to at Sports. Use the hashtag ThePenta, and you can make my wish come true. And if I had one of those wishes, I'd use it to help a very special young man suffering from what scientists are now labeling as an addiction to punning. You can learn more about this very serious subject in this week's last hit. Hey, oh, goodbye to Keith. His life was McBree from that one. Oh, that was a perfect pillar. He thought he could win. He was so low, but he healed too much. A lot of the golds are going to Apollo. And it was going to sort of dig them out of this hole. Pun not intended. It will be Apollo. Really not intended? You expect people to ever believe that it's not intended? These puns, while terrible, might seem like a harmless bit of fun. But beneath the surface of these jokes lies a silent killer. According to neurosciences, 
Puns can be a sign of a severely damaged brain, something that we were already starting to suspect around here. Patients who are constantly joking could suffer from orbitofrontal damage and circuit dysfunction that may promote pathological joking as a compulsion. It could be as bad as your dad's dad jokes, your boss's inappropriate innuendos, or just your teammate's bad puns. We all know someone that suffers this terrible affliction. Won't you help stop this epidemic before it does tons of brain damage? I'm Riving to Biz in the Third. And remember, it's all pun and games until somebody you love gets hurt. I'm losing my mind. See, this is what happens when I don't tell puns for a day. Vitality is gonna sing, takes on the one v one challenge, and I get freaky on the street. Make a wish and blow out the candy. Ah! <laughs> I legit actually have thought about that. <laughs>